independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Another day, and it continues. This is the long, long slog they've been talking about now. The Russians are going to absolutely batter everything in sight they possibly can. The Ukrainians are going to continue to do damage against their forces, of which uh, it seems to be dwindling at this moment while they try to replenish. Uh, but yesterday, NATO got together, right? Had a party, sat down and talked, as you tend to do, situations like this. But the question arose about chemical weapons. Again, nuclear chemical weapons. Would there be a response? Because that's what everybody wants to know. Is there a line that's red? Is there a line that, that you're just like, you know what? You do this, and this is where we go. You've attacked and done something so heinous that we can no longer sit on the sidelines. We would respond. We would respond if he uses it. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. What the hell does that mean? Well, essentially is, okay, so he uses chemical weapons. Kind of what chemical weapons? Is it a irritant agent, right? Like a mustard gas where it's an irritant. It's, it's, it's more about being annoying. It's not going to kill you or you're going to go with the sarin-like subject uh, uh, gas, something like that that's going to immobilize you and eventually cause you to suffocate and die in a most painful, heinous way. Two separate things. That's, that's it. Here's what you got to do, and we think we have to remember. We can't do anything until they cross the line. We can't, the, the emotional side of things, as much as we want to, as much as, as a human being wants, and you look over and you're thinking to yourself, we cannot let this happen. We could stop this. We could finish this. We, we could take this out in a moment's time. We can't be drawn into it. We have to take a deep breath and allow it to play itself out by continuing to do the things we need to do, which is pretty simple. Continue to give them everything they need. Continue to do that. Doesn't mean that we sit there and tell them the things that we won't do, which is funny because somebody asked Biden about, hey, did you go like too quick into the game saying, hey, you, you, you weren't going to do anything militarily? Weeks before Russia invaded, he had said, Americans would not be fighting Russians in Ukraine because it would start World War III. Our colleague Cecilia Vega asked if he maybe expressed that too early. Was he too quick to rule out military action? And did that embolden Vladimir Putin? Very short, succinct answer from the president. He said no and no. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the thing that Putin didn't want to have happen, which was he expected NATO to be weak. He expected Europe to collapse. He expected this thing to be easy right that that nobody was going to get behind him and and eventually the 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 will of their people was the, was just going to break well they got the necessary tools they needed to fight and continue to do so yes they'd like more they, they Zelensky yesterday he said, i just want one percent one percent of your tanks one percent of your planes just one percent don't need anything else just give me one percent that's it. We could continue to give him the things that he needs and could continue to do the things that he and his country have been doing. There's no reason why this thing isn't going to continue to be an absolute nightmare for the pooter. But then on the other side of stuff, we're not feeling it the way that Europe's feeling. it. Got a buddy over there uh, who what after me and said, you know, it's a. Uh, He's in England. It's a uh, situation where things are rising. Prices. Prices are jumping. And you're going to feel that soon. The Russians are just starting to get the beginning of what it's like when not only do the stores close, but the ones that stay open, some of the things you want are going to be much harder to get. And they're finding that out now. And they're also finding out that, yes, while they have goods, they also exported a decent amount of the world's breadbasket along with Ukraine 
And if people aren't taking your goods, well, guess what? Your goods are less valuable because you've got excess of it. But you're trying to make up the difference, and you're going to pass it on to the customer. For us, we've felt that for the last year and a half. Printed too much damn money, gave a lot of stuff out, supply chain issues, people fighting over less goods, inflation going through the roof, and it's not slowing down. You can expect Russia's war on Ukraine to have a big impact this year on the price we pay for everyday household items, gas, groceries here in the U.S. The Fitch ratings firm is now upping its inflation forecast, citing this war, saying U.S. consumer prices are now expected to rise by an average of 7 percent this year compared to 4.9 percent last year. The problem here is that the world relies on Russia and Ukraine for a bunch of the stuff that makes the economy go, food energy, metals, a whole bunch of other raw materials, and that supply is now in doubt, in part because of the powerful sanctions that have been imposed on Russia. Yeah, powerful sanctions. These sanctions are, in modern times, you will not see anything like this. Iran, yes, but Iran had so many sanctions against them in, in ways that, 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 that I think that people didn't realize. And those sanctions weren't overnight. And Iran also didn't have what Russia had. I watch, uh, you know, I watch some of these uh, uh, people on the old YouTube there in Russia and, and to see what's going on, what's happening. And it's very interesting to see how things are going. Because slowly but surely, they're feeling it. Slowly but surely, things that they want to get, they can't get. Slowly but surely, they're understanding, wow, I can't get the Internet in certain things. I can't get this because my credit card's cut out and they're, we're not allow- they're not allowing us to do any of this. The money that we're trying to, we, we just, we can't do it. Because as stuff starts to come due, you're going to realize, well, you got away with it early because you'd already paid up through the month and some of these things. Now here it comes. Well, that's going to come to us. It's a lagging time frame, and we've got it facing us right now. Things are going to get a little tighter. Before the invasion, Fitch ratings expected inflation would cool off this year. Now they think it'll heat up calling for 7% on average inflation for this year. Remember, the Fed's goal is for 2% inflation in a healthy environment. We are nowhere near there. And there's this growing sense that the Fed is going to have to do more to cool off inflation by raising interest rates aggressively. That'll increase borrowing costs on mortgages and car loans, credit cards. We haven't seen anything like that since 1994. I think that really speaks to the scale of the inflation problem here. Yeah. It's not going to get better. It's not. And if you're running right now and you've got a D by your name, you're looking out there and you're looking at all of the polls. And guess what the polls are saying? You're going to get your ass handed to you in November. That's it. 68% of Americans. 68% of Americans right now, according to the AP NORC poll, say they're worried about gas prices. Oh, my God. Over 65% of Americans disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy. 96% of Republicans, 36% of Democrats. The overall share say they disapprove is up from 57% in December and 47% from July. 59% express the same degree of worry about rising grocery prices. Translation, every one of those are people that vote. Every one of those people are people that are frustrated, they're looking around. Can I blame everything on Biden? You can't blame everything on Biden or the last guy or the next guy. But the reality is, is your party's in power. And normally, your party would suffer some sort of defeat come midterms. Guess what? This may be an ass-kicking of epic proportions. On top of that, vast majority of Americans believe that he's been weak with Russia. He hasn't been strong enough. For me, I don't think you need to demonstrate it might-wise, but I do think the way that he's talked and some of the things he's said and done has shown a sign of weakness, not so much capitulation. And so much of this is about 
strength, the perception of strength. It's why we have nuclear weapons. That's why they have nuclear weapons. It's not whether or not you'll use them. It's the perception is that you have them and you can use them. Look in the wild. Rattlesnake rattles its tail. It's a warning. I'm going to bite you. Stay away. A cobra, which is not actually a cobra, a cobra will flare up, right? Has the hood. Why? It is giving you a warning that this is something that you don't want to mess with. Doesn't mean they will. But it's telling you. That's part of the issue. I think people look at him and think he's weak. He's frail. He's weak. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Hope you're doing well. A lot of stuff to get to today. You know, we talked about it the other day, the the weight issue. Uh, and it's interesting because a uh, plus-size model has posted some stuff. And it goes back to show you, it really goes to show you that you need to make changes for everybody that wants those changes. Not that they have to make changes or try to live within the aspects of everybody else. It's insane. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Calibrate, speaking of weight, healthy way to lose weight. So many of us have tried shock diets, the, the, the fad diets, the I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And you're like, why doesn't it work and sustain long term? Well, so much of it has to do with zero to do with your willpower or, the, or how much you work out. So much of it has to do with the actual genetics inside of your, your metabolic system isn't firing the right way. It got comfortable at a certain level. And when you drop below that, it panics. That's why with Calibrate, you're going to find out by making lifestyle changes that are not insane and FDA approved medication that you're going to see drastic results that are going to be fantastic and long-term and sustainable. FDA approved medication, you're going to meet with a doctor via video. You got one-on-one app coaching. On average, Calibrate's earliest members lost well over 15% of their body weight, and that's continuing. If you go and look now, they're down 20, 30, 40% of their body weight, and they're maintaining it. Fits into anybody's lifestyle. Right now, save $50 on a metabolic research reset. So this is what you do. Go to joincalibrate.com. Code is Chad. C-H-A-D. You're going to save $50 off right there. Joincalibrate.com. Code Chad. Joincalibrate.com. Use code Chad to save. Chad Benson Show. Me too. Hashtag immigration reforms. Hashtag help. I'm trapped in a hashtag factory and I can't get out. The Chad Benson Show. The PBA, which has been fighting vaccine mandates, saying if the mandate isn't necessary for famous people, then it's not necessary for the cops who are protecting our city in the middle of a crime crisis. The teachers union adding if the rules are going to be suspended, particularly for people with influence, then the UFT and other city unions are ready to discuss how exemptions could be applied to city workers. Yeah, as it should be. New York lifted uh, their mandates for athletes, Broadway performers, musicians, comedians, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it's it, enough, enough. My God, it's a cult. It is. It is an absolute cult. Get over it. I, 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 I don't understand the weird fascination dr lena wen is being attacked too if you guys haven't seen so she's been one of those uh uh you know here here's she's been very much a big part of the whole covid everybody turns to her you know milken institute and kind of like uh, another fauci but they're going after her because she says all right it's time to get back with your life and people are like how she said for those who don't agree that the vaccinated could return to pre-pandemic normal i ask what should we do perpetual masking forever not dining out avoiding large weddings and indoor gatherings virtually everything has risk and zero covid is not a viable strategy and of course you don't say that sweet mother of god no yeah I, I, what, what are you talking about? Do you really think that, that 
going back to work and 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 living your life in perpetual fear is how you want to go with the hopes that we're going to get to zero, which will never happen. I'm going to tell you this again. Zero, 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 never happen. Something that can go between animal and human is not going to be eliminated. Never has been, never will be. And, of course, she's bad news now, so they're attacking her. Because that's what you do. Because even though she was once an ally in the fight against COVID and most importantly in the disdain against Donald Trump and anybody else out there who had a red hat and or voted for Republicans, the fact is we can see now she's anti-science. So stupid. I don't know how. How do you live your life like that? Like I am. How many times have I told you? I got my vaccines. When they asked me to wear a mask, I wear a mask. At some point, uh, I started to make more noise how ridiculous and stupid this was and that, you know, uh, the the pretend mask, that the, the charade that we were all playing that, you know, they asked us to play. Here's your 50 cent mask that doesn't stop anything, nor will it. But if you could please continue to play the game, we'd much appreciate that. But living your life is important, right? I mean, what's the use of doing stuff? If you want zero risk, then you need to stay indoors forever. But don't ask the government to take care of your ass. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Going back to sir uh, to work survey. So this is a survey about people going back to work. Very interesting. Talk about that more in the Ukraine. Plus a bigger girl, uh, nutritional overachiever. She uh, uh, is a model. And uh, she is very upset by uh, some things that happen on airplanes. We'll talk about that as well. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Ah, fighting continues. NATO is, well, you know what's funny? The the thought, right? So Putin thought everybody's going to crack. They're all going to give up, et cetera, et cetera. And what it's done is the exact opposite. It's brought NATO closer together, understanding that there is a reason that this union, if you will, was formed. And that was a just in case. Thinking for the last umpteen years, that's never going to happen, right? We don't need anything. The pooter's in there. You know, we get our oil and gas cheap, all is well. Yeah, he's kind of a Richard. He wants to be king forever, but he can't live forever. So we'll just wait it out. But then Georgia happened, and they're like, ah, oh, you know, don't do that. Chechnya, several occasions, oh my goodness, but still, Crimea, really, no more. Knowing full well he'd been telegraphing this for years. Telling anybody and everybody, this is what I'm going to do. This is what this is. This is what it's all about. And the fact that he has the cojones to say, oh yeah, I'm going to the G20. Well, we should decide if he should come. Don't. Let him come. Make sure there's a warrant, an international warrant out for him for war crimes. And the minute he gets there, take him into custody. (laughs) And say, we have a warrant for you. All the while, try to build up relationships behind the scenes with whoever's left. Because his defense minister still is... They showed pictures of him at like, you know, on a Zoom call or and a few other things. But you don't know how old that is. And if you notice that the two people that everybody around the world had said, 
hey, the FSB leader and his defense minister, those may be the two people that replace him, have suddenly fallen under house arrest or had heart issues and disappeared at the time that is most fragile for him and his survival. Hmm. Interesting. Indeed. Very, very interesting. All that is going on. The reality is the battle continues. A sadder, grimmer, bloodier, longer scenario where he doesn't win. Ukrainians don't win. They keep grinding down in in both directions. Yeah, I kind of think that's what we're going to have here. I mean, you know, the the thought of, of, of them winning is it's not impossible. It would have been impossible had everybody not come together and made sure that they had everything they needed. Because you're not just going to fight the war on hope. You need stingers and javelins and, 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 and missiles and, and bullets and guns. But there is a chance, absolutely, to fight this thing to a standstill. A standstill is a win for the Ukrainians. A tie is a win. When it comes to who wins the war. But at the end of the day, every day that goes by, while it's not looking good for Putin, the people of Mariupol, the people of Kiev and and Kharkiv and everywhere else are just getting crushed. They're getting destroyed. And that is not something any of us want to see. Mariupol is another one of those things where that that is what is going to be left? Think about if you live there. There's 100,000 people still stuck there. If you live there or live there, your city is not just decimated. It's virtually gone. It's dust and a few two- and three-wall buildings with burnt-out tanks and cars and the smell of death. Russia is tight. Russia tightening its grip now on Mariupol, now giving out humanitarian aid to the very people they have made homeless. Part of a clear aim now to permanently occupy the city. Yeah. He really needs that if he wants that straight shot to Crimea. I'm assuming at some point that will happen. But it isn't going to be easy. It's going to continue to be nasty, and they're going to continue to lose soldiers. And and when does that get back to the Russian people that not only is this not going well. So I, I watched this guy who, who goes out, and he, he films everything in Russian, and then they translate it. And he talks to young and old. The old, which get about 60% of the media is state media. It used to be like 85 90%. So the young have their source of media. And when they talk to the young, they're upset about the fact that, that companies are leaving. They're upset about the fact that, that food's getting more expensive. The old are like, well, Russia will be fine. We've always been fine. Everybody's always hated us, which is a big narrative, right? They're always a victim. And then the other thing is, oh, yeah, this is all Ukraine's fault. Everything here is Ukraine's fault. It was their fault in 2014. It is their fault now, and they just don't understand how much we're trying to save them. That's tough. to That that, that indoctrination is tough. But remember, what is it, 15 to 16 percent? That's all you need to shift in the public's mind to start a movement. And that's why I keep looking at the young people who didn't grow up in the Soviet Union who grew up in the world of Levi's and rock and roll and MTV and vacations in America, vacations in London. They grew up just as much as we did on Disney. And now with all of these things leaving, the reality is is that's the, the, the group that's going to have the energy to push. We'll see if they've they've got that. Because ideally, the war ends with him being deposed, captured, killed, runs for his life and hides in some, you know, some country, you know, not even Belarus, some who God knows, you know, 
I, you couldn't even. I, I at this point, I don't even know where you would go. Because if you're running like that, the toxicity, you know, he's going to be in Tumekistan or. That's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is this thing goes on for years. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. I saw this uh, photograph. The man who took the photograph is disappointed on the Today Show. Photographer, excuse me, the woman, Erica Denhoff. She was upset. Why? Well, she took a photograph, and it was modified. Who was the photograph, or what was the photograph of? Leah Thomas, the swimmer. Leah Thomas, the swimmer, her photograph was modified by NBC and the Today Show, where they softened her face to give it a more feminine look. The photographer said she was disappointed by showing the show's editing. She goes, I pride myself in providing authentic images as a photojournalist. She didn't think it was real at first. She kept looking at it. She goes, I noticed the softening, which eliminated the rougher imperfections that might appear more masculine and figured the move was intentional. Of course it was. Of course it was. Because that's the world that we live in, the insanity of what the world that we live in nowadays. Man's not a man. It's whatever you want it to be. Girl's got a girl. We don't even know what a woman is. Can't define that. There is no definition for that. Kelly J, if you don't know who she is, she's a feminist. Uh, Kelly J. Keene, she's the person who, who was very upset because I think her daughter was competing in one of the things against Leah Thomas. And that's when somebody, you know, got in her face and said, hey, you're a, uh, how do you know what gender she is? You're not a biologist. And she said, well, I'm not a vet, and I know what a dog is, <laughs> which I thought was funny. She was on with Tucker talking about just this in general, this insanity. Well, I think if you can no longer define what a woman is, we can't talk about women. Uh, our language is being diluted. Uh, all over the place in the UK and I'm sure in the US uh, women are called cervix ha havers, menstruators, chest feeders, birthing persons. Uh, so we have to give up the language that describes us. Um, but the, you know, if the only people that are allowed to be called women these days are actually men. <laughs> yes. And I thought that was funny. I did. Again, this is nothing against Leah Thomas. This is the insanity of where it begins, though. The 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 indoctrination of of, you know, I get I don't know how many people a week, two, three, four that send me something that their kids are doing in school. And their kids are like my kids age and they're spending more time on pronouns and gender than they should be on things like coding. <laughs> well, why would it? Because that's that's what you should be doing. It's nuts. Spending more time at work on unconscious bias training than on actually doing things you're supposed to be doing. There's issues. Yes. It's about treating people as people, fairly, equally, not special. You want to be called Leah? Fantastic. But the indoctrination where NBC is going to change something up, going to soften because they want to make it look like Leah doesn't look like who she, he was before. That's like, there's your propaganda, kids. This I've thought about long and hard. I think it comes to cowardice. Uh, I think it comes to cult-like mentality. I think these people are brainwashed. Um, they are experiencing truckloads of cognitive dissonance. I talked to many girls outside of the swimming pool uh, who, you know, you said the question, like, what is a woman? And they literally would not speak. It's really yeah. sinister. Yeah, because they're terrified. What if I say something that somebody doesn't agree with or decides to get me canceled? What if I say something that gets back to my professor who then tells me that, I can no longer be in his or her class anymore because I'm a disruption and because I have an opinion about something that doesn't meet up, not even with the mainstream belief, 
But the narrative, and those are two separate things. Behind closed doors, oh, I know what a woman is. Yeah, 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 I know what a woman is. Right, the Y chromosomes, the, uh, you know, the, the innards, the womb, things of that nature, right? The hoo-ha. I know what that is. But in front, oh, I couldn't define a woman because it's whatever you feel that you are. That difference between narrative in the front and belief are two separate things. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. NCAA upsets yesterday galore. More of those today. Just want to say my bracket I no longer have to follow because, well, the team I picked to win it, they decided they only wanted to play the three games. <laughs> but you dumbass. Ah! My pillow right now for you has a deal. Normally, these amazing, incredible towels are $109.99. Right now for you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends of all ages, $39.99. Savings galore. Ding, 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 ding. So your chance to get the MyPillow towels, which are made with cotton grown in the United States. You get a 16 money back guarantee. Soft, amazing, super absorbent, not scratchy, not lotiony. All you have to do is go to MyPillow.com slash Benson. Use the promo code Benson. You're going to get them for $39.99, normally $110. bucks. you are going to love these. Tons of colors, six in a set. You get two big towels, two hand towels, two washcloths. That is MyPillow.com slash Benson. We call 800-983-4975. 800-983-4975. Use that promo code Benson. Take uh, every opportunity to get deep discounts on all of these things, but take advantage of the towel set for only $39.99. MyPillow.com slash Benson. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. What can we expect from the Oscars hosts Sunday night? There's three of them this year. Wanda Sykes, Regina Hall, and Amy Schumer. And Schumer says, after a tough couple of years, she thinks everyone's ready to have a good time. I think people want that night to escape and laugh and you know see celebrities make fools of themselves you know just so we can like trash each other the power of the dog leads the nominations with 12 the oscars air live sunday night on abc i've seen none of the movies and i'm proud to say that but every year i continue to pick the winners power of the dog will win best picture best actor will be benedict cumberbatch because he plays a toxic masculinity man ba- based on homoerotica, apparently. You're like, what? Yeah. As far as best actress, I've seen none of these because I've seen none of the other stuff. I'm going to go with, oh, wait, you know what? That's a lie. I have lied. I did see the eyes of Tammy Faye. Loved it. Loved it. She will not win, even though she probably should, based on the fact she's the only one I've seen. Not Kristen Stewart. Uh, I'm going to go with Olivia Coleman, The Lost Daughter. Her, her performance was something I've not seen ever before. <laughs> Best animated feature, simple and easy. I've seen one of these. I saw The Mitchells versus Machine. I love that, too. But that's going to go to Encanto. Best Supporting Actress, Oh, God, Chad, what are you going to go with here? Mm. Uh, Andrew Ellis, King Richard. Best original screenplay. Oh, that's a tough one. The tough one. Paul Thomas Anderson, Licorice Pizza. And then the best supporting actor is going to be Troy Kotzer from CODA. Best director is going to be Jane Champion. There you go. You guys got that. I've picked the winners. You don't need to do anything else, by the way, Arizona. But don't listen to me, because if you're listening to me, then you would know that I also had a bracket. But last night, Arizona decided that they didn't want to play basketball anymore this year, 
And so they have stepped away from the game by getting their butts kicked by Houston. Let's take a look at my final four, shall we? Uh, Let's see here. Kansas and Arkansas are still in it, but I picked Arizona to win it. It's not a good pick. I am currently ranked 5.3 million in my choices, kids. So that is not a good pick at all. Today's going to be the fun one, though. Everybody's excited because, yes, tonight we're going to see uh, uh, little St. Peter's take on Purdue. Everybody's pulling for them. Purdue is not really an underdog. They're, they're, they're not an underdog, but they should be. But because you're playing the 15th seed and everybody in the country's behind them, that'll be fun to watch. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Check out all of our fun stuff. If you miss any of the program, you're like, you know what? I would like to hear more of Chad. Check out the podcast as well. You can get it where great podcasts are available. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Breaking news here. Talking off the air. Anthony's in studio with me today. Producer Anthony just informed us he's never been to an IHOP. Do not understand how that happens in the modern world that we live in. Phil then asked the question, have you been to a Waffle House? And there's different Waffle Houses, right? Some places will say they're the Waffle House, but there's... The South and the East has the Waffle House. Throughout parts of, of the West, they have a few things, but they're not. <sighs> Never been to an IHOP. How do you? How, how do we do that? How do you not go? You, you have to go out of your way to not go to. And for, you must not be international, right? You must not be international. I just don't know how he does it. It's a Friday. The war is still raging on. The question of what will he do or not do. And we've talked about the chemical weapons yesterday. If you haven't heard, Biden talking about chemical weapons. It's made it pretty clear that something would happen. We would respond. We would respond if he uses it. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. Yeah. Translation, okay, what kind of of chemical weapons are you using? Are you using something that's killing people or using something that's more of an irritant? Uh, you know, that's, that's like he's been right. Like when he said, well, if he invades them, you know, if it's just the tip, that might be different than if it's something else. Well, it was something else. And we've seen the sanctions and he's gone, you know, he's, he's reiterated again. These sanctions were never meant to stop Putin. Durr. He never thought you guys were going to sanction him like this. But the other side of things is that, that they're, nuclear thing that nuclear weapon but not the one that's flying at millions of miles an hour it's not really flying at millions i'm exaggerating here that is 55 times the size of the asteroid that struck the earth no we're not talking about that we're talking about the ones that well can get on the battlefield Think of this as a battlefield nuclear weapon. It's a much smaller yield in general. And and Russia looks at those weapons in an entirely different way than the U.S. does. The U.S. nuclear weapons, forget it. We never, ever want to use them again. We have them. We have tactical nukes. We obviously have strategic nuclear weapons as well, as does Russia. But Russia looks at it as just another battlefield weapon. And there is something that she said there that we need to pay more attention to. They're not us. They don't think like us. The older generation over there, the leaders, the powers that be, they're not us. We seem to think that everybody wants all the same things we do. 
the freedoms, the stuff, the three bedroom, two bath mortgage, the, the, they always paint themselves a victim, always playing the, oh my God, we're just fighting for our survival BS. That's why we have to do what we have to do. We look at things in a much different way. We're telling him all the things we won't do. His people are saying, we're never going to rule anything out. He's playing, oh, tell them this, that if we need to, we will wipe the earth. We'll destroy everything, period. And we're like, well, we wouldn't really do that. That's the difference. We have this, 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 and it's sad. It's this weird illusion that the rest of the world wants to be like America. The rest of the world wants to be like the West, right? They want freedoms. They want all of these things, and they're all prepared and ready for it. It's just that they've never gotten the chance, and that's a silly notion. It really is. It's a silly notion. Oh, there are people that within those countries that absolutely want that. There's no doubt in my mind a younger generation that has grown up more Western than Soviet wants many of the same things we do. But when it comes to Putin and an older generation, we seem to think that they, well, they're just like us. They're just like us. They're not. I think the quicker we understand that, the better it's going to be. But... We'll still paint the picture that, oh, they just, you know, when he says something, he means, no, we got to stop that. Think of him as exactly who he is. He has shown us time and time again everything that he is about. And yet we continue to think that somehow you're going to reason with somebody who has killed people, had people poisoned, had his enemies thrown in jail, has invaded Georgia, Belarus, I mean, Georgia, Chechnya, Chechnya again, and Crimea, not to mention the wars in Syria and several other places. And yet we continue to think, oh, if we could just reason with the guy. You're not reasoning with him. The way that they look at stuff is what Martha Raddatz says. And, and Russia looks at those weapons in an entirely different way. Yes, than the U.S. does. The truth. Entirely different. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. We'll have more about that. The humanitarian insanity that uh, is going on, and and if, think about this for a second: what is going on in Poland, and the amount of people that are there. On top of that, we're going to take a hundred thousand in. In the coming days and weeks, uh, we'll see what that looks like. How does that work out? If it's anything like Afghanistan, those people are going to be wherever they are for quite a long time. Guess what happened during COVID? People's worlds began to shift. And the beauty of how we live, right? So we're just talking about Russia and all the, oh, we're all just victims. And we're a republic, right? So we're, we're a republic. We're not this democracy there. Well, we're just a great democracy is what we do in the sense of voting. And, and but the reality is we're a republic. Each state is autonomous. It runs itself. And then there's the federal aspect of it. Right. So and states rights are so important during the lockout, as I like to call it, because that's really what it was. The government locked us out. We didn't go on strike. The government locked us out. <laughs> they told you had to go home. But during the, the, the chaos. People started making decisions and choices. They were seeing that their world had changed, that they wanted more freedoms, that 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 the cities and states that they lived in were overreaching, that they were too expensive and and they were getting taxed on everything and they made decisions to move. The pandemic has had some impact on where Americans decide to live. Many have been working from home miles from their offices, some a few states away. Texas, with its mild weather and lack of a state income tax, has been a major magnet for relocation. The Census Bureau says five of the top ten counties in terms of numeric growth are in the Lone Star State. Yeah. Wonder why. 
Not mentioning the other side of it, which is people got sick and tired of being told, no, you need to stay indoors. You can't go out. You got to wear a mask, even when you're in your house, by yourself. Wear a mask or else. Places like Santa Clara County that said, hey, you know what? Uh, you have a Mexican restaurant here and you allowed people to sing songs because you were playing music. And because of that, we're going to fine you for allowing that to happen. While COVID was going on. Santa Clara County, by the way, lost 3%. 3% of their population left. California, it's not a shocker, kids. Ready for this? L.A. County, New York County, Manhattan, and Cook County, Chicago, the three biggest losers. The winners that were big, Fort Bend, Williamson, Denton, Montgomery counties, and Collin County in Texas, Maricopa County in Arizona, Florida, Polk and Lee counties, Utah County in Utah, and Riverside County, which is also the Valley of the Dirt People in Southern California, was a big winner as far as people moving from L.A. County and from San Francisco to a, to a, a county that's really red comparatively to any other counties throughout California, outside of maybe the central parts of California. You're still close enough to L.A. to go do things, but far enough away that their politics doesn't get on you. But it shows you. People wanted freedom. They wanted to be left alone. They wanted to not be taxed at the hill. They were sick and tired of nanny states. Was it just about, well, there's no taxes there? Or the climate's more mild. More mild than California? No. I lived in Texas. I got snowed on. Lived in L.A. Never got snowed on. Didn't have hurricanes. No. We had earthquakes. But nobody cares about those. People made decisions based on the fact that they thought, I don't want to be here. By the way, New York County. New York County lost... 6.9% of their residents. That's huge. People were leaving. And it wasn't just because taxes were cheaper. That's some of it. It was also because they valued the freedom of being able to go to a state where they didn't feel like, hey, I've got to pay for everything, but I'm also demonized. And if I want to wear a red hat, or I want to say that a woman is a woman and a man is a man, Uh, I can do that. And if I don't want to wear a mask in perpetuity based on whatever thing that you're coming up with today, then this is what I want to do. And it speaks the beauty of the states. States compete to get people to come there. Think of them as businesses. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. We'll trend here in a little bit. A little watch trending. So, got uh, got a new office we're going to be moving into uh, soon, so I can do my morning show closer to home, so I don't have to get up just before I go to bed. And one of the things is, we moved into it, you know, I kind of had that, the, the, the smell, uh, people that left it before didn't do a great job, so what do I do? Boom. Grab my Eden Pure, put it right in the wall. Smells delicious. If you have odors, don't care what it is, you got a litter box, you got dogs, you got uh, maybe somebody smokes, whatever it is, Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifier is amazing. Right now, $200 savings for the OxyLeaf 2 Thunderstorm. You're going to get three units. You get a $200 savings, and you're going to use uh, this code, CHAD3. CHAD3. 150,000 units sold. You plug it right into the wall. Zero filters to buy. Do nothing. And within minutes, you will smell the difference. It is truly incredible. It really is. Right now, I want you to save big. $200 on Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack. Get full coverage for your kitchen, your office, or anywhere you want, even in the car. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and put in discount code CHAD3 to save $200. That's EdenPureDeals.com, discount code CHAD3. Shipping's free. EdenPureDeals.com. Use code CHAD3. Chad Benson Show. States? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. Bye. 
Time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Take a peek, find out what's trending on the interwebs, what people are talking about, looking over the last 24 hours. Arizona basketball eliminated. They were one of the favorites. Duke basketball survives. You get another Shashevsky opportunity. Coach K, I couldn't tell you one player on Duke. Somebody asked me, who's playing for Duke? And I'm like, Christian Lader? I don't know. Grant Hill? <laughs> I don't think you like that. Barry uh, Keegan. Apparently there's a deleted scene from the Batman movie that has been posted. You check it out. World Cup qualifiers. We'll talk about that in a second. One of the great upsets, not just in soccer, but maybe in modern Sports history took place yesterday. USA and Mexico last night, nil-nil. Mexico went to the Azteca. It was at home at the Azteca. The United States probably should have won the game. <sighs> but they didn't. They did not. Kyrie Irving, he of the basketball fame, trended a lot yesterday because he can now play basketball for his team at home. He's been playing on the road, but because of New York's weird rules where he could be at the game... <laughs> Other team, other teams, players could be unvaccinated, but he could not play on his own team because science. I don't think that's nice. Jen. Head over to Twitter where everybody's insane. Jeannie Thomas, that's uh, Clarence Thomas's wife. Apparently now she is the mastermind of January 6th. I think that's what the text messages are all about. I don't think that's real. Kim Jong-un. Yeah. He's a. Uh, He's gone full top gun in his new missile coverage because he's got a new missile. His people can't eat, but he did invent the burrito, so we'll give him that one. You guys realize that they believe that they, their leaders found a unicorn. And people believe that. Just, I want you guys to get that. Soak that in for a second. That their people believe that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy found a unicorn. And that he's played golf once in his life. And he had like seven holes in one. I've played golf a lot. As you know. I had a hole in one just before Christmas. That's the only time I've ever had a hole in one. So that shows you the insanity of what kind of cult he has built up over there. Yesterday, World Cup qualifying, North Macedonia. You ever heard of it? Probably not. North Macedonia is a country in the Balkans. Has 2 million people. They beat Italy, the reigning European champions, who last year defeated everybody to be called the best in Europe. They scored a goal in extra time, defeating the mighty Italians and eliminating them from the World Cup. That is, do you believe in miracles? Two million people live in North Macedonia. I couldn't tell you one of their players on their team. I know everybody on the Italian team. Oh, their capital's called Scopa. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Putin thought the world wouldn't stand up. Putin thought NATO was weak. 
apparently inside of the Kremlin and his dacha, wherever he's at, because he's not on one of those awesome, massive, huge, huge yachts that uh, the world's not going to do anything, right? NATO's weak, but he found out that that was wrong, 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 wrong. NATO is stronger than ever before, and Putin, we got to thank you for that. There were about about 2,000 NATO troops taking part in this exercise, troops from Poland, Romania, UK, and America. They did an air, land, and water assault trying to repel this imaginary enemy. Of course, the mission of NATO is to deter and defend. They say they will be ready for anything. Yeah, and if I'm them right now, I am bringing everybody I can and getting them ready, everybody. Not, you know, 100 here, five. I'm, I'm, I'm moving as many pieces as possible of the things that we have to do to show them that should he cross a red line, which has now been put out there. The Biden administration, the Biden administration has made clear that they are not going to tell you if there is a red line uh, or if there is not a red line. They will not be pushed into saying chemical weapons are my red line. And you've got to remember that Joe Biden was vice president when Barack Obama basically said it was a red line in Syria if they use chemical weapons. They did. It wasn't a red line. Yeah. And that did not go well. One of the reasons I think that, that you know, I didn't dislike Obama. I didn't like some of his policies. Uh, I thought he was brilliant. But at the same time, because of that, I thought his decision making at times was poor because he wanted too much information overload. Right. Paralysis by analysis. You need information. But when you get to the point where you have so much information, you're not making a decision. You're just sifting through information. That's it. And while he bombed the hell out of everything, that red line thing will live with him for a very long time. Biden talked about a chemical attack. What if? We would respond. We would respond if he uses it. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. And that, again, goes back to very vague. Very vague, just like at the beginning of this thing, he says, well, it's a, what, what kind of invasion is it? Is it like, is it just a little bit? Is it it's just the tip kind of invasion? Then, uh, you know, is it, is it like for like? Is it like if you drop chemical weapons and you, it's irritant? Well, you know what? We're going to sanction another 500 people that are working for the government. If you drop sarin and nerve gas and you kill 5,000 people, you know, children laying in the street, curled up in, in positions that their bodies are contorted, their backs are broken, and they died the worst death, uh, we're going to come across the border. <clears throat> I He's not signaled for any of those things. I still think, much like Mike Lyons does, the red line should be the line of another country in NATO being crossed by the Russians in aggression. Because I'm sure one of the things they talked about at this meeting and continue to do on a daily basis is, what if a missile gets fired, the dumb bomb, because 60% of their missiles, apparently, are ineffective. But one misses its target and lands in Romania, lands in Poland, strikes a couple houses, but was not meant to be an act of aggression, do we just go, screw it, we're all going for it? You have to have a measured response. And as much as we seeing children on the, on, on, you know, like Syria, I'm telling you guys, the pictures that came out of Syria, when Trump saw it, he's like, well, we can't have that. We can't, that's a, we can't do that. No, sorry. That's why I don't think he'd use chemical. Maybe an irritant, but I don't think he'd use chemical. The tactical nuke is a totally separate conversation.
but the chemical side of things, because seeing a city that is flattened and the city, let's be real, the tactical is much smaller and it, it destroys a, a, a neighborhood or a certain portion of the city that's three, four, five square you know, blocks and you know, eight to 10 square miles. And it looks like the surface of the moon. But you don't see bodies strewn, strewn everywhere. That's a different sight, as horrible as it is. But if you saw 2,000 people laying on the ground in fetal positions, contorted like it's a, it's a monster movie, a woman holding her child, frozen in time and death, changes a lot of things. And being the creatures that we are emotionally, I think that would push. And that's why the red line to me has to be you've crossed over into a NATO country, not because of ineptitude, but because you have serious, insane ideas of attacking the West. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, your Twitter, tweet at us. Meanwhile, back at home, uh, I find this interesting. Everybody's going back to work scenario, right? Because so many people, you're home for a year and a half, maybe two years, depending on where you lived. Maybe it was only six months, but you enjoyed it. And even when you started to come back, it was part-time. But now everybody across the country is like, hey, time to come back. But does everybody want to come back? The boss says it's time to come back to work. The majority of U.S. companies, U.S. companies want staff back on site full time. But a survey by staffing experts Robert Half finds he or she will probably get some pushback. Half of the respondents currently working from home would look for a new job that offers remote options if their companies required the employees to return full time. Senior Executive Director Paul McDonald says working parents and millennials are most likely to jump ship unless they can do at least some of their job from home. Daria Albinger, ABC News. Yep, and that's true. And that's not going to change. COVID sped this up. But as we talked about earlier in the week, people want autonomy, right? They want freedom, the flexibility. They got used to that. And then you couple gas prices in and the rising cost of, of child care. All of a sudden, bosses are, are faced with the decision of, you know what? Uh, I'm spending a lot of money on rent that I don't need. My people are getting the stuff done at home. And if you think that getting people to come back is the answer, I think you're going to find more and more people are going to be, those people that are coming back aren't happy. And they're looking. They're absolutely looking. I see it around here. I talk to, you know, the salespeople when the thought was everybody got to come back, they had been used to being at home. They were happy, and and things were good. And they said, you know what, rather than do this, let's do a hybrid. And they're in like one day a week. The rest of the time they're doing the work from home. And it's working out. If it doesn't work, and I think that's what you do, you, you set something up for your people saying, look, as long as you get your work done, I got zero problems with it. If you're not getting your work done, then there needs to be changes. But that work-life balance became a reality with people when they said, hey, I can do this from home. And in doing this from home, I can save money. I have more time with my family. I feel like I have a sense of autonomy where I'm working in some ways for myself. That's a big thing for people, and that's understandable. Trust me, I'm not a big fan of working for people. But then there's the other side of it. We're going to talk about this. Ladies return back to work. Come back to work. She has put on a few LBs. It's an article that's in the Huffington Post. And uh, uh, Anthony and I have had a discussion about this, and I'm not quite sure I'm buying all of this, or maybe there's an understanding of a few things here that uh, how we lie to ourselves. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you.
Because I do. Bunch of crazy people. You know who you are. You guys get it. Rough greens. It's crazy. The uh, uh, Remember at the beginning of the, the pandemic, everybody went out and there was, there was like, oh, my God, I'm home. I should go get a dog. And you go and you get a dog, right? You go and you rescue a dog and it's great and stuff. But do you really think about, okay, what's it going to cost? What am I going to have to do? And I want to get all this kind of food. And you realize stuff starts going up. And that's where Rough Greens comes up. Rough Greens is amazing. Everybody here at work that I know has an animal has asked me over, does it really work? Does it really work? It totally does. It's got vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega-369. It's a supplement that goes on top of your dog's food. And the amount of people that come up to me and tell me, man, I tried everything. I tried CBD. We were doing all these things. And we just made this little change. And it's incredible. It is. You sprinkle on top of your dog's food. You watch the difference with your dog and how your dog reacts. It's great for their skin. It's incredible for their digestive system. And to me, the most important thing for my older dog was how much energy and how much it helped his hips and his joints. Try it right now before you buy it. RUFFgreens.com slash Chad. You go there. They're going to send you a bag for free. You cover the cost of shipping. Roughgreens.com slash Chad or call 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! It seems Netflix loves love. I've met the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. The streaming service ordering a bunch more reality dating shows, two more seasons of the hit Love is Blind, Jewish Matchmaking, which is a spinoff of Indian Matchmaking, which is getting a third season, a U.S. version of the Australian series Love on the Spectrum, a second season of the queer dating show The Ultimatum, which hasn't yet premiered its first season, and an untitled show that features people from many of its reality shows. That's a lot of hooking up. (laughs) That's it? Yeah, it's kind of the jam that's going on there. That's what they do. Because it's cheap. As they're finding out, as they compete, Netflix, with everything, that you're not just a streaming service, you're a full production service. And you, your shows are amazing when, you know, they're big and they're bold. At the same time, you need to fill a lot of stuff. And you're looking around going, what's cheap? This is cheap to produce. Not costing you three million an episode. Might cost you three million for a season. So that's where they're going now. Tough to do, man. It's tough. They're finding that out. But I will say they they try to come out with bold, big, new stuff all the time, and that's that's great. I uh, we we've been watching The Last Kingdom. My wife says it's not The Last Legion. It's The Last Kingdom. Uh, and I'm obsessed. We watch one or two episodes a night because I got to go to bed because I got to get up in like eight minutes later. But it is. I'm obs- I don't know what I'm going to do afterwards. And normally I don't get into shows like that. I don't. I watch like one or two. I'm like, I'm on moving on. This, I love it. Love it. I didn't think I'd like it after the first one. I'm like, I don't know if I really like this show. Second one, I'm, second one, I'm like, it's okay. Here I am now, halfway through the third season. And it's just stupid amazing. It is. It is. And that's, you know, Netflix really took off during the pandemic. And people are now having to go back to work. Which brings us to this story. A woman's returned back to work. She has. She's gained 70 pounds. Emily McCombs is her name. She works for the Huff Po. She wrote about this. Uh, And she started talking about the quarantine 15, referring to the widespread phenomenon of quarantine weight gain. I thought it was cute, but I'd already gained more like 40 pounds. Now, two years in the pandemic, that drastically has changed. In everything about the way we live. I'm estimating the number is closer to 70. I haven't weighed myself to be sure, but my clothing is now four or five sizes larger than when we took our laptops home in March of 2020. She said every day I would commute to work. I used to walk to my subway, stop, climb up, down multiple sets of stairs, move around the office before or after some work days. I used to go to the gym, either nearby a chain or I belonged to one convenient located in the building where I worked. I'd go to spin classes, small dark rooms full of people, sweating, breathing all over each other. Then I used to walk to another subway station, climb more stairs, 
to get home. And I don't think people realize. So when I work out during the day, if I push myself, I'll get twelve to fourteen thousand steps because I'll do sprints. And you know, if I'm if I'm trying to run, depending on how my knees feel, soccer wise, and I, uh, but you know, I, or I'll go for a, a long walk, or you know, like golf, I try to do that as much as possible. But when you're home, you have no idea. Even being around the office, there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't get at least eight to ten thousand steps. But when you're home, you don't. You don't. And she talks about this, that she did not change her eating habits. That's not true. You may not change the way that you eat when you sit down to eat. But you know what you do? You change the other things throughout the day. Not moving's one of them, but snacking. Right? Just wandering around, grazing on things here and there. Oh, a chip. Ooh, this. Ooh, that. And that's something I don't think people realize. If you really sat down for a day or two and you did the calories that you ate, I think you'd be really shocked. You're like, whoa. But one of the other things in this, though, and this talks about it. She's a young, healthy person. I mean, she's now much heavier. But she talked about the fact that when she had a chance to go back to the gym, she couldn't fathom being around other people. Like, so you're, you're terrified of COVID. You, you, you're living the COVID thing. It's, it's impossible for you to do. She talked about the fact that uh, she started taking viral dancing classes. She goes, I would never have done without the shield of distance. And I'm like, my God. And then, of course, now she has put herself in a position where she's eaten herself into a protected group which is obese, and she's now facing fat people discrimination. She goes, racism also intersects with fat phobia. Studies show that black women who are fat are discriminated against the most in the workplace. So now she, too, has become a protected class. We are more likely to experience medical bias and misdiagnosis, which we can know can be deadly. I don't like dating apps. But if I did, I'm not sure I could stomach opening myself up to the volley of microaggressions, altering the uh, fetishizing messages that turn immediately sexual. (sighs) Everybody is in a group that needs to be protected now. We touched on it. It's not healthy. It isn't. Go look at the data, especially when it comes to COVID. But rather than saying, I need to change, it's just easier to get the other 99% of the globe to change. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Breaking news. Joe Manchin says he will vote for KBJ. Katanji Brown Jackson says she's qualified because, you know, she's not a biologist. Uh, Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? Not in okay. this context. So I'm you not a biologist. The meaning of the word "woman" is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition. The fact that you can't give me a straight answer about something as fundamental as what a woman is underscores the dangers of the kind of progressive education that we are hearing about. Yeah, and if you don't think it matters have you seen some of the stuff your kids are doing at school i'm just throwing it out there not trying to be a richard i i don't want anybody out there to say oh you you hate trans i do not 
don't care if you're non-binary, trans, any of that stuff. I care more about the indoctrination that goes on and the insanity and the fear that people can't even say, well, a woman, my chromosomes, uh, breast, womb, vajayjay, not birthing people. <laughs> it's the stupidest thing ever. Men can have periods. No, they can't. They can't. Yes, they can't. No, they can't. They cannot. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, but he's going to vote for her, as everybody else said. It was a charade. A charade, as most politics is. Back to serious subjects. There's a war going on, an invasion that has taken place in a faraway land. But the reality is that faraway land can have repercussions yeah, in the United States of America. How? Not just with higher gas prices, but food? Yeah, food. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re- re- so talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. Yeah, and we're going to be filling. There's so many things that they produce in both the Ukraine and Russia that are used in so much of what we consume and the products we have because, as you know, we, we, we got a lot of people to feed. And this is something that we need to be aware of and understand. It's not just that gas prices are going up or we it's the supply chain. There's a lot of things that you're going to start to see that are going to shoot up in price and or not be available. The bread basket, so they call the Ukraine and Russia, wheat, corn, oil, Oh, and one other thing, fertilizer that grows stuff. So there is going to be serious issues. And when people, you know, like the Joy Reads of the world, it's like the only reason they let anybody's paying attention to this war is because there's white people fighting. No, here's the reality of it. The world, as horrible as it is in Yemen, The reality of that war having a global impact is zero outside of the tragedy of the famine and the deaths. And it is horrible, and we didn't pay enough attention to it. On the other side of things, this means the same people in that region are now going to have less for food which means things like famine speed up. Oh, yeah. That's what I think people don't quite get. Not just about oil, not just about gas, not just about discomfort. Globally, this thing has a massive impact. Then you've got the refugee side when it comes to Europe on the humanitarian crisis. This number alone, here in Poland, they've now received more than 2 million Ukrainian refugees fleeing war. The numbers overnight from UNICEF, now 4.3 million Ukrainian children uh, displaced from their homes because of war. And when you think about that, that's more than half of all of the children uh, inside Ukraine. The total number now, 10 million Ukrainians or more, now displaced by Putin's war on Ukraine. Yeah, they're expecting... Originally, they thought it would be three, four, maybe five million refugees. Displaced means six million of them, five million of them are probably still in the Ukraine. They just aren't housed anymore. They don't have a home. Their city has been bombarded. They are fleeing for their lives, and they're getting to wherever they can find safe shelter from the war. Poland's been overrun, and the fact that Poland has taken as many in as they have is truly incredible. It really is. We've made two reporting trips now uh, to the region to report on the humanitarian crisis, and and this number alone, here in Poland, they've now received more than 2 million Ukrainian refugees fleeing war. 2 million. 
We have been traveling throughout the region, and overnight we learned of a theater that had been built by the Ukrainians. Uh, we went to visit it just here in Poland, across from uh, the Ukraine border. And inside we found so many mothers and their young children uh, fleeing war, leaving behind husbands, brothers who are now fighting against the Russians. Yeah, and you, you got to think about that for a second, right? Just for a quick second, that six months ago, six weeks ago, these people were going about their lives, and now they're living in a theater in Poland. Their husbands, their brothers, their fathers, their sons are now at home defending their country like that it happened. We met with a boy. He he's left school. He's traveling alone. His parents wanted him to flee for his own safety. He said he can't wait to play basketball again. He was proud of his jersey. He pulled it out and showed me. He's number 11 on his team. He hopes to go home soon. And of course, there was the 16-year-old girl, Elmira, who told me she remembers the last day of school. It was exactly one month ago when her life changed. Yeah, and it's changed for everybody. And the question is simply this: What happens? If and when this thing ends, what are you going home to? You've you've got nothing. Your 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 village, your 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 suburb, your city may not exist. How do you rebuild from nothing with nothing? And it's great that that you know everybody's stepping up. By the way, you know who stepped up the most? How many people really? Fortnite over the weekend. I was telling the, uh, my. Uh, my co-worker here over the weekend, Jack, and everybody got excited because Fortnite released a new skin, right? So so they released this new skin and this new play, you know, like area that you play in, and everybody got excited. So, so you go on there and play, and the good guys are yellow and blue. And the bad guys are, well, they're the bad guys. And they said, from now until April 3rd, we're going to donate everything that we make off Fortnite. How much have they made? Well, in three days, they have given and raised more money than countries. They've given as much as Australia, just behind Finland. Japan's given $200 million, And... They believe that Fortnite, until April 3rd, will raise somewhere around 200 to $300 million to help with the relief efforts. That's the power right there. That is power. And you're yellow and blue. You're going to be good. My stepdaughter, Lily, she got up, and I said, I said, did you play Fortnite with Jack last night? And she goes, no, I wanted to, but, uh, you know, she goes, I went to bed early. Uh, and I said, oh, I said, Jack was super excited. Because uh, they released the new uh, world and skins. And she goes, what? So she goes to go on there Sunday. And it was like, it, told, it said on there, you have 93 minutes before you can get on. And Jack told me he had to wait like four hours before he can get on and play. And I don't know how much the kids know about what they're doing. But they're definitely more in tune than when we were younger. Because Lily's always, she'll ask me questions. Jack will ask me some questions. You know, they don't want to get too deep, I think, because it gets scary because, you know, you're hearing nuclear bombs and and you're hearing stuff like that. The end of the world. I know when I was a kid growing up, I grew up at a time dead center of the Cold War where we had air raid sirens tested on Wednesdays. So. And the fear of what, you know, could happen. So I get it. But it's amazing to see the way that the world's come together. Something that Putin did not think would happen. He didn't think the people were going to call him on his stuff. And they did. And they continue to do so. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Reach us through all of our crazy social medias and everything else that's out there. Car Shield. Talk about inflation through the roof. What are you doing about it? How about protect yourself with Car Shield? 
Plans are inexpensive. They got plans to fit anybody's budget. And with you get 24 7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. And the beauty is the shop is the shop that you choose. They get them paid directly. They're going to do the paperwork, they're going to handle the payment. You pay a small deductible. It's that simple. And right now, Car Shield's doing something awesome. They've already helped over a million drivers. Why not be one of them? They're going to let you lock in your price forever. You go to carshield.com slash Benson. Or call 800-391-8888. Make sure that you use code Benson. You're going to lock in your price forever, and you're going to save 10%. That's carshield.com slash Benson. Or call 800-391-8888 to save 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. No need to socially distance while listening to your Chad Benson Show podcast. Four out of five experts say so. I'm a scientist. There is no corona. But hurry before they change their mind. You know they will. Chad's podcast found on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite COVID-free podcasts. Oh, my gosh. I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. This is the Chad Benson Show. President Biden says while he made no threats to China's President Xi during their phone call last week, he made it clear to Xi that he would be putting himself and China in, quote, significant jeopardy if it helped Russia with its invasion of Ukraine. The president said he pointed out the number of American and foreign companies that left Russia because of what he called their barbaric behavior. China understands that uh, its economic future is much more closely tied to the West uh, than it is to Russia. Yeah. Yeah. They don't seem to really be doing anything. They just kind of said they would. I uh, The more that this goes on with China not really helping out, at least I- in ways that we see, uh, the more that you realize that, hey, maybe Xi just didn't want his little old Olympics ruined. It's already bad enough that these things suck. But maybe... Eh, I'll tell him that we'll help him. Will you? Nah, I got other things going on. We can't lose all this stuff. We got things going on. I got people to feed. Can't have things going sideways. Jeez. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. COVID's insanity. We're talking earlier about that. Uh, if you missed it, you grab it on the podcast about the lady went back to work. She put on 70 pounds, worked at Huffington Post, and now she's eating herself into a position where she is now a, 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 a protected group in uh, nutritional overachievers or people of size. <laughs> it's not very nice, Chad. Uh, and then how terrified she was, though, to go anywhere because of COVID. She, could, she couldn't fathom being in a room working out with other people and being healthy. Because she could catch something that doesn't kill like we were told. Unless you're obese, several comorbidities, or you're a hundred. Along the way, she put on weight. We'll talk, you know, that's, oh, how can that be? It's like, oh. And now she feels that she's being microgressed and how everybody's, everything's a fat shaming to her. But it goes back to the insanity of COVID. And New York yesterday decided, the Mayor Adams, that, hey, we're, we're going to change some stuff up here. Uh, but only for certain groups. The PBA, which has been fighting vaccine mandates, saying if the mandate isn't necessary for famous people, then it's not necessary for the cops who are protecting our city in the middle of a crime crisis. The teachers union adding, if the rules are going to be suspended, particularly for people with influence, then the UFT and other city unions are ready to discuss how exemptions could be applied to city workers. 100% correct. You shouldn't have it. It's all time to move on. Period. Time to move on. Time to get away from the insanity. And allow people to live their lives. If you've been vaccinated, don't worry if somebody else hasn't. Your vaccine should protect you from dying. That's it. It's not going to protect you from getting it and or giving it. But it should give you some protection of which you're probably not going to die anyways. But it should give you protection from 
getting really sick. And if you're older or you have several comorbidities, then you should be protecting yourself when it's flu season and other other times of the year that there may be something out there lurking. You know, take this serious. Take it serious. I'm just not insane. Got my vaccines, but I don't think I need to wear masks perpetually. I mean, you know, uh, and Dr. Lena Wen comes out and she goes and she goes, here's a lady that's been the female Fauci. She talks about, oh, you know, it's time for us to get on with our lives. And people are like, oh, God, how could we stop making the mask part of your identity? It's nuts. And yes, if you're a 25 year old athlete in the best shape in the, your life, the reality is you're not going to die. So let them play. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Leah Thomas and the photograph on NBC. What did they do with that photograph? More on Ukraine as well. It's the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Ah, fighting continues. NATO is, well, you know, it's funny. The the thought, right? So Putin thought everybody's going to crack. They're all going to give up, et cetera, et cetera. And what it's done is the exact opposite. It's brought NATO closer together, understanding that there is a reason that this union, if you will, was formed. And that was a just-in-case. Thinking for the last umpteen years, that's never going to happen, right? We don't need anything. The pooter's in there. And we get our oil and gas cheap. All is well. Yeah, he's kind of a Richard. He wants to be king forever, but he can't live forever. So we'll just wait it out. But then Georgia happened, and they're like, ah, oh, you know, don't do that. Chechnya, several occasions. Oh, my goodness, but still. Crimea, really, no more. Knowing full well he'd been telegraphing this for years. Telling anybody and everybody, this is what I'm going to do. This is what this is. This is what it's all about. And the fact that he has the cojones to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to the G20. Well, we should decide if he should come. Don't. Let him come. Make sure there's a warrant, an international warrant out for him. For war crimes. And the minute he gets there, take him into custody. <laughs> and say, we have a warrant for you. All the while, try to build up relationships behind the scenes with whoever's left. Because his defense minister still is, they showed pictures of him at like, you know, on a Zoom call or and a few other things. But you don't know how old that is. And... If you notice that the two people that everybody around the world had said, hey, the FSB leader and his defense minister, those may be the two people that replace him, have suddenly fallen under house arrest or had heart issues and disappeared at the time that is most fragile for him and his survival. Hmm. Interesting. Indeed. Very, very interesting. All that is going on. The reality is the battle continues. A sadder, grimmer, bloodier, longer scenario where he doesn't win. Ukrainians don't win. They keep grinding down in in both directions. Yeah, I kind of think that's what we're going to have here. I mean, you know, the the thought of, of, of them winning is it's not impossible. 
it would have been impossible had everybody not come together and made sure that they had everything they needed. Because you're not just going to fight the war on hope. You need stingers and javelins and 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 missiles and, and bullets and guns. But there is a chance, absolutely, to fight this thing to a standstill. A standstill is a win for the Ukrainians. A tie is a win when it comes to who wins the war. But at the end of the day, every day that goes by, while it's not looking good for Putin, the people of Mariupol, the people of Kiev and, and Kharkiv and everywhere else are just getting crushed. They're getting destroyed. And that is not something any of us want to see. Mariupol is another one of those things where that, that is what is going to be left. Think about if you live there. There's 100,000 people still stuck there. If you live there or live there, your city is not just decimated. It's virtually gone. It's dust and a few two- and three-wall buildings with burnt-out tanks and cars and the smell of death. Russia is tightening its grip now on Mariupol, now giving out humanitarian aid to the very people they have made homeless, part of a clear aim now to permanently occupy the city. Yeah. He really needs that if he wants that straight shot to Crimea. I'm assuming at some point that will happen but it isn't going to be easy it's going to continue to be nasty and they're going to continue to lose soldiers and and when does that get back to the russian people that not only is this not going well so i, I watched this guy who, who goes out and he, he films everything in russian and then they translate it and he talks to young and old the old which get a, about 60 percent of the media is state media it used to be like 85, 90%. So the young have their source of media. And when they talk to the young, they're upset about the fact that, that companies are leaving. They're upset about the fact that, that food's getting more expensive. The old are like, well, Russia will be fine. We've always been fine. Everybody's always hated us, which is a big narrative, right? They're always a victim. And then the other thing is, oh, yeah, this is all Ukraine's fault. Everything here is Ukraine's fault. It was their fault in 2014. It is their fault now, and they just don't understand how much we're trying to save them. That's tough. To, that, that, that indoctrination is tough. But remember, what is it, 15 to 16 percent? That's all you need to shift in the public's mind to start a movement. And that's why I keep looking at the young people who didn't grow up in the Soviet Union who grew up in the world of Levi's and rock and roll and MTV and vacations in America, vacations in London. They grew up just as much as we did on Disney. And now with all of these things leaving, the reality is, is that's the, the, the group that's going to have the energy to push. We'll see if they've, they've got that. Because ideally, the war ends with him being deposed, captured, killed, runs for his life, and hides in some, you know, some country, you know, not even Belarus, some, who God knows, you know. I, you couldn't even, I, I, at this point, I don't even know where you would go. Because if you're running like that, the toxicity, you know, he's going to be in Tumekistan or, That's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is this thing goes on for years. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. I saw this a photograph. The man who took the photograph is disappointed on the Today Show. Photographer, excuse me, the woman, Erica Denhoff. She was upset. Why? Well, she took a photograph and it was modified. Who was the photograph or what was the photograph of? Leah Thomas, the swimmer. Leah Thomas, the swimmer. Her photograph was modified by NBC and the Today Show 
where they softened her face to give it a more feminine look. The photographer said she was disappointed by showing the show's editing. She goes, I pride myself in providing authentic images as a photojournalist. She didn't think it was real at first. She kept looking at it. She goes, I noticed the softening, which eliminated the rougher imperfections that might appear more masculine and figured the move was intentional. Of course it was. Of course it was. Because that's the world that we live in, the insanity of what the world that we live in nowadays. Man's not a man. It's whatever you want it to be. Girl's got a girl. We don't even know what a woman is. Can't define that. There is no definition for that. Kelly J, if you don't know who she is, she's a feminist. Uh, Kelly J. Keene, she's the person who who was very upset because I think her daughter was competing in one of the things against Leah Thomas. And that's when somebody, you know, got in her face and said, hey, you're a uh, how do you know what gender she is? You're not a biologist. And she said, well, I'm not a vet and I know what a dog is. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. She was on with Tucker talking about just this in general, this insanity. Well, I think if you can no longer define what a woman is, we can't talk about women. Uh, our language is being diluted uh, all over the place. In the UK, and I'm sure in the US, uh, women are called cervix ha havers, menstruators, chest feeders, birthing persons. Uh, so we have to give up the language that describes us. Um, but the, you know, if the only people that are allowed to be called women these days are actually men. <laughs> yes. And I thought that was funny. I did. Again, this is nothing against Leah Thomas. This is the insanity of where it begins, though. The 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 indoctrination of of, you know, I get I don't know how many people a week, two, three, four, that send me something that their kids are doing in school. And their kids are like my kids age and they're spending more time on pronouns and gender than they should be on things like coding. <laughs> well, why would it? Because that's that's what you should be doing. It's nuts. Spending more time at work on unconscious bias training than on actually doing things you're supposed to be doing. There's issues. Yes. It's about treating people as people, fairly, equally, not special. You want to be called Leah? Fantastic. But the indoctrination where NBC is going to change something up, going to soften because they want to make it look like Leah doesn't look like who she, he was before. That's like... There's your propaganda, kids. This I've thought about long and hard. I think it comes to cowardice. Uh, I think it comes to cult-like mentality. I think these people are brainwashed. Um, they are experiencing truckloads of cognitive dissonance. I talked to many girls outside of the swimming pool uh, who, you know, you said the question, like, what is a woman? And they literally would not speak. It's really yeah. sinister. Yeah. Because they're terrified. What if I say something that somebody doesn't agree with or decides to get me canceled? What if I say something that gets back to my professor who then tells me that I can no longer be in his or her class anymore because I'm a disruption and because I have an opinion about something that doesn't meet up, not even with the mainstream belief, but the narrative. And those are two separate things. Behind closed doors, oh, I know what a woman is. Yeah, 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 I know what a woman is. Right, the Y chromosomes, the, uh, you know, the, the innards, the womb, things of that nature, right? The hoo-ha. I know what that is. But in front, oh, I couldn't define a woman because it's whatever you feel that you are. That... Difference between narrative in the front and belief are two separate things. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. NCA upsets yesterday galore. More of those today. Just want to say my bracket I no longer have to follow. 
because, well, the team I picked to win it, they decided they only wanted to play the three games. <laughs> but dumbass. Ah! My pillow, right now, for you, has a deal. Normally, these amazing, incredible towels are $109.99. Right now, for you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends of all ages, $39.99. Savings galore. Ding, 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 ding. So, your chance to get the MyPillow towels, which are made with cotton grown in the United States, you get a 16 money back guarantee. Soft, amazing, super absorbent, not scratchy, not lotiony. All you have to do is go to MyPillow.com slash Benson. Use the promo code Benson. You're going to get them for $39.99, normally $110. You're going to love these. Tons of colors, six in a set. You get two big towels, two hand towels, two washcloths. That is MyPillow.com slash Benson. We call 800-983-4975. 800-983-4975. Use that promo code Benson. Take uh, every opportunity to get deep discounts on all of these things, but take advantage of the towel set for only thirty nine ninety nine. MyPillow.com slash Benson. Chad Benson Show. Boys, give me a bowl of chili with plenty of peppers. One Mexican hot Why don't you mugs grow up? The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. What can we expect from the Oscars hosts Sunday night? There's three of them this year. Wanda Sykes, Regina Hall, and Amy Schumer. And Schumer says, after a tough couple of years, she thinks everyone's ready to have a good time. I think people want that night to escape and laugh and you know see celebrities make fools of themselves you know just so we can like trash each other the power of the dog leads the nominations with 12 the oscars air live sunday night on abc i've seen none of the movies and i'm proud to say that but every year i continue to pick the winners power of the dog will win best picture best actor will be benedict cumberbatch because he plays a toxic masculinity man ba- based on homoerotica, apparently. You're like, what? Yeah. As far as best actress, I've seen none of these because I've seen none of the other stuff. I'm going to go with, oh, wait, you know what? That's a lie. I have lied. I did see the eyes of Tammy Faye. Loved it. Loved it. She will not win, even though she probably should, based on the fact she's the only one I've seen. Not Kristen Stewart. Uh, I'm going to go with Olivia Coleman, The Lost Daughter. Her, her performance was something I've not seen ever before. <laughs> Best animated feature, simple and easy. I've seen one of these. I saw The Mitchells vs. Machine. I love that, too. But that's going to go to Encanto. Best Supporting Actress, Oh, God, Chad, what are you going to go with here? Mm. Uh, Andrew Ellis, King Richard. Best original screenplay. Oh, that's a tough one. The tough one. Paul Thomas Anderson, Licorice Pizza. And then the best supporting actor is going to be Troy Kotzer from CODA. Best director is going to be Jane Champion. There you go. You guys got that. I picked the winners. You don't need to do anything else, by the way, Arizona. But don't listen to me, because if you're listening to me, then you would know that I also had a bracket. But last night, Arizona decided that they didn't want to play basketball anymore this year. And so they have stepped away from the game by getting their butts kicked by Houston. Let's take a look at my final four, shall we? Uh, Let's see here. Kansas and Arkansas are still in it, but I picked Arizona to win it. It's not a good pick. I am currently ranked 5.3 million in my choices, kids. So that is not a good pick at all. Today's going to be the fun one, though. Everybody's excited because, yes, tonight we're going to see uh, uh, little St. Peter's take on Purdue. Everybody's pulling for them. Purdue is not really an underdog. They're 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 not an underdog, but they should be. But because you're playing the 15th seed and everybody in the country's behind them, that'll be fun to watch. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. 
Love hearing from all of you. Check out all of our fun stuff. If you miss any of the program, you're like, you know what? I would like to hear more of Chad. Check out the podcast as well. You can get it where great podcasts are available. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show.